Hallelujah. Amen. Well, are you ready for the tithes and offerings? Amen. Hallelujah. You can make your checks payable to Trinity World Outreach, TWOC. You can give by debit or credit card. Everybody get an envelope that's on the back of the seat in front of you. We need a good offering here in the house online as well. Join us right now. Uh, if you would, you can text also 84321, the amount you want to give. I've already done that this morning. And uh, uh, it, it's a great way to be able to, to tithe and to give an offering as well. And if you want to give vision offering, you type the same number and then uh, the amount you want to give, space, and then vision 2020. And that'll go into our vision account as well. One of the things the Lord taught me, told me a few weeks ago, and I've been trying to, to just give you little nuggets here and there, is the book of Hosea uh, in chapter 4 and verse 6 says that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And, and, and I believe that a lot of people struggle because they don't have enough knowledge. They just don't know what they don't know. And one of those areas that, that is true is in the area of the tithe. They don't understand how it opens God's uh, gateway to blessing in your life. That's why we talk about it and teach about it. I've been talking to you out of the book Pastor Winston wrote called The Power of the Tithe and how important that is. And I'm going to do that in a little bit more depth in maybe a few weeks. But let me just read this. He's talking about Malachi 3 where it says, Bring the tithe into the storehouse. And he says, there is a door that we must open for God's blessing, and that door is open through the giving of tithes and offerings. When you give tithes and offerings with the right attitude, you unlock the floodgates of heaven, and it pours out healing, deliverance, peace, and floods of glory. Tithing is based on a law called sowing and reaping. Amen? God has planned for us as Christians to reap certain benefits in this earth, and he must be involved for it to happen. When we fail to give our tithes, the hand of God is withheld from blessing his children. Then we're not under the curse, but when, like I use that umbrella illustration, it sure looks like it. You're blessed, but you're not operating in the fullness because there hasn't been a tithe given. Four amens. But I'm telling you, it opens the windows of heaven. And, and we bring our tithe. And Lisa and I bring the majority of our offering into this house because this is where God has planted us. And, and it helps that we're helping missionaries around the world and we're creating uh, uh, children's ministry and our youth are meeting right now and media and live stream is happening all because of your tithes and offerings. And when you bring that, it opens the window for you to walk into more blessing. I'm just telling you, according to the Word of God, that's the way it works. Amen. Father, bless the tithers, the givers today. Lord, we're going to be faithful today. Lord, I thank you for overflow. Every need is met. We release our faith for overflow offerings, 100% tithers, every week in this house. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Watch what's happening at Trinity. I'll be back in a moment with the word for you today. It's fall, y'all. And it's Logan back here with your weekly buzz. If you are in junior high or high school, we want to invite you to join Pastor Krista for Tribe. Tribe meets on Sundays at 10.15 a.m. and 5 p.m. over in the Life Center. Tribe has undergone a makeover, so invite a friend and come check it out. Attention men, we will be having a Bible study on the campus in the cafe on Saturday, November 14th from 8 to 9 a.m. We hope you will join us for this important time on the Word. See Alfred Beck or Stan Nicholson after the service for more details. Hey Trinity, Mitchell here. I just wanted to thank you for all the wonderful donations that came in this month. Because of your generosity, we were able to deliver a huge load to Fern Creek Highview Ministries. However, we're not done yet. We will continue to accept donations indefinitely, so please keep them coming. 
We are also looking for volunteers for service-related projects to help with Bates Memorial. We have an updated list of needs from them, so please see me after service to learn more about these opportunities. The Bridge Recovery Group meets on Wednesday from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. in the Cafe of the Life Center. This ministry is for those struggling with chemical addictions. Child care is provided. For more information, you can email Corey Farr at Corey, K-O-R-I, at trinityworldoutreach.com. Well, that's all that we have for you all today. Do not forget to love Jesus, to lift people, and to live with purpose. We'll see you next week on The Weekly Buzz. family night last night, a movie night, and lots of folks, a lot of neighbors came over and, and joined us. It, it was really, really good, and uh, we're going to be doing more of those kind of things uh, here on the campus as well, so be watching for all of those things that are coming up. Amen? Let's take our Bibles. Are you ready for the Word? Yeah. Let's take our Bibles and go to Matthew chapter 5 is where we're going to start, and I'll get there in just a couple of minutes. And today I want to talk to you about kingdom answers. I want to give you answers from the kingdom of God today. And I want you to hear me today with maybe a set of different ears. I hope you would do this every week, but particularly today, I want you to hear me as your shepherd. I want you to hear me as your pastor. Uh, because there are some things I want to say to you that's going to help elevate your life if you will allow it to and will get us out of wrong thinking and get us into kingdom thinking today as we talk about answers from the kingdom of God. <clears throat> this is going to be an interesting week in our nation. Come on. In 35 years of preaching, I have never addressed elections in my life. And I won't be doing that today. But what I am going to do is I'm going to address my church. And I recognize that, like most elections over the last 30 to 40 years, Later this week, or whenever things are finally known, 50% of America is going to be happy, and 50% of America is going to be unhappy. And what I've come to you tell you today, and nobody knows, you can listen to all the, you're getting, you can listen to all the people you want to listen to, but ain't nobody knows. And my opinion is just as valid as the guy making $8 million on TV telling you. And your opinion is just as valid. I told Donald yesterday I watch college game day, and they have all these really smart football analysts <coughs> that tell you how the games are going to go on Saturday. They don't know anything. <laughs> I know as much as they do. Even though they got all the stats and all of that, one guy yesterday said, Oh, this team, no, they're, they're, no, they're going to stay right with this other team. Uh, no, it's going to be close. In fact, I think they're going to win outright. And the team he was talking about got beat 48 to nothing. I said, what? Why are they paying you any money? They need to call the Turpin household. <laughs> so what I'm telling you today is no matter what happens, don't give your peace up for something you can't control. You don't control it. And you're, you might be listening to people that are on either side that are trying to take your peace. Jesus, listen carefully to me, and I'm going to try to get through this as quickly as I can, <coughs> and then I'm going to run away and go do some other stuff this afternoon. No, I'm kidding. I'm not. Uh, Jesus is going to be Lord on Monday, November the 2nd. And Jesus is going to be Lord on Wednesday, November the 4th. I told you a long time ago, part of what is behind this pandemic is fear. We taught you about Psalm 91, that you don't have to live in fear. 
Everybody's trying to get you to live in fear. If, if one, one side gets elected, oh, my God, it's the end of the world. Oh, my God, you talk to somebody, oh, my God, it's the end of the world if that guy gets elected. Oh, no, it's the other guy. If he gets elected, oh, my God, we're all going to die. Well, I got news for you. That people you didn't want to be elected 30, 40 years ago, they got elected. And you know what happened? You went on living. And so it's a lie straight out of the pit of hell that you ain't going to make it one way or the other because you're not dependent on any system. You're just not. This isn't a new message. This isn't like, oh, what did he come up? This is what I've been telling you for, I've been doing this for 30, since 1982. I'm in my 30, 30, 38th year of doing this, 39th year of doing this. We'll be married 40 years. We were doing it two years, so about 38 years. This isn't a new message. You're listening to fear mongers, and you're listening to people that want to, you know what? As your pastor, I want to tell you to turn off all of it because they're, they're negotiating your fear, and you can't. You can't. It's wrong. I've had people leave the church because they thought I was too far, or the church was too far one way. I had other people leave the church because they thought it was too far, not far enough that way. And they listened to the same sermon. Well, that's the devil. That's not a problem on the preacher's words. That's, that's not having enough hearing to hear. So, you don't have to have any fear. We just sang uh, you, you, that... His eye is on the sparrow. I don't have to have any worry or anxiety. None. 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 So, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 9. I'm going to give you, how many, how many things am I given? Four. And i got to do it quick, but I can. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. That's when you're blessed, when they're talking trash about you. He said, we, so he said, blessed are the peacemakers. Number one, we are called to be peacemakers. Not peace finders, peacemakers. There are, the Bible talks about there are fault finders. People will find fault in anything you do. You got some family members like that. Can I get an amen? amen. Not that any of them are here today. I'm just saying that you got family that, oh, man, they'll find fault with anything you do. You do it one way, they're going to find fault. You do it another way, they're going to find fault. And, and, it's, and it's crazy stuff. But there is also peacemakers. As kingdom citizens, wherever we go, we are called to make peace. Amen. We don't look for it, we make it. Our job is to take chaos and bring solutions and peace to it. How do I do that? 1 Peter 5, 7 says, I cast all my care over on him. All my care. I don't. I don't, Philippians 4, 6 says, I don't have to be anxious about anything, nothing. I don't have to be anxious about viruses. I don't have to be anxious about the economy. I don't have to be anxious about elections. I don't have to be anxious about anything. Peace is the pathway to your inheritance. Without peace, you're not going to be able to walk in everything God has for you. Because you're so stressed about all these different things. And I want to tell you, this is true in your home. Part of your, some of you are missing your inheritance because you got too much chaos in your house. And you need to stop it. You need to bring that in line. Stop letting the kids run the house. Stop letting the, the uh, you know, everybody else tell you things. Get, get Jesus to be Lord over your house. Am I helping anybody? So we're called to be peacemakers. Number two, we don't ever look to the world. Come on now, I'm talking to believers today. I'm, I'm not talking to unbelievers, amen? I'm talking to kingdom citizens right now, right? Am I? Come on, help me. 
I need an amen from somebody. I, I need a hallelujah. Come on, preacher. You're preaching pretty good. Look at 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I'm not supposed to love what the world loves. I'm not supposed to love everything they love. Well, they, you know, they talk about, you know, doing this and doing that. That's not me. We're, we're kingdom people. I'm not, I, I'm not, I'm a kingdom guy. I'm not looking at the world for my world system. Well, they're talking about, you know, the economy is going to do this. It's going to do that. I'm a kingdom guy. I checked this morning. The streets of heaven are still gold. Everybody, I still got a mansion. Amen. Look at, look at John chapter 15 and verse 18. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me. This is, this is good news. If the world hates you, you know it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, uh-oh, wait a minute, the world would love its own. If the world's loving you, you better check how you're operating, operating, Yet because you are not of the world, because I chose you out of the world, therefore, leave this up for a minute, the world hates you. The world doesn't participate, they hate. And that spirit of hate tries to get in the church. But we're not supposed to be, as, as B.W. says, we're not supposed to be haters, we're supposed to be participators. We've got to participate in love. We've got to participate in joy. If, and, and if the world's not hating you, it might be because we sound too much like them. The problem some, that the world doesn't have with some churches is because they sound just like them. Amen? They talk like them. They cuss like them. They're all the whole story. They, they look like them. All of the same beliefs. Well, no wonder they don't hate you because you're like them. When you start saying, wait a minute, we're called to be separated and be separate. Then they're going to start trash talking you, telling you you're all this and call you names. Just remember, they hated him first. They don't hate you. They hate the God in you. We look to heaven. Why are we expecting anything from a fallen, sinful world that they are not able to give? Why do we think the world could ever give us peace? They can't. We, gotta, we can't think that any system, no matter who's in the White House, no matter who's in the Senate, no matter who's in Congress, no matter who is whatever, they're, they're, they've never been our answer, ever. We're kingdom people. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm a kingdom person. All right, number three. We've got to put our eyes on eternity. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 16. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 16. Yay, nay. I can go over there. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 16. Let me read it to you. Therefore, we don't lose heart. Don't lose heart, kingdom people. Even though our outward man is perishing, Yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal, it's eternal, weight of glory. While we do not look at things which are seen, sure seems like a lot of people are, though. But we're not, we're kingdom people. We're not looking at what's seen. We're looking at things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. God's working something out in eternity that we look at things and we think this is the end all to end all. And it's not. We got to have an eternal perspective. I told you a few weeks ago, if you care more about how your neighbor votes than where they spend eternity, you need to check your heart. One day, we will stand before the Lord. Things are starting to line up. 
Middle East events. Things are starting to have some semblance of, of in, serious end-time events. I heard people, somebody say, well, the vaccine might be the mark of the beast. It's not. Stop that silliness. It's not. It's, but it is going to come one day. Things are going to shape up the way the Scripture says. We need to keep our eyes on Jesus, and our concern should be for eternity. I visited with Joe and Diana Scheich a little bit last week. And years ago, they reminded me, we were talking about years ago, some of you maybe have been here long enough to remember this, that we had what was called turning point ministry. And we would run our bus, and we would pick up sometimes anywhere from 50 to 80, 90 men uh, that were going through addiction treatment. And we would bring them here, and we would minister to them. And, and it got so large, we started holding our own service. Uh, they started holding their own service out in the Life Center out there. And Joe and several others would, would lead that. And through that ministry, hundreds of men gave their lives to Jesus Christ. And, and, and some of you made lunches for them after. I remember that some of you made lunches for them. But you know what they would teach the men when they gave their heart to the Lord? They would say, remember this date that you've got a new birthday. That today is the day you got born again. And when the men would file in, they would ask them, what's your date? And they'd say, July 9th, uh, August 15th, September uh, 1st. Uh, January 21, and they would say, that's, that's my date that my life got changed as they filed in. And they taught those men to remember that date. This was years ago. How, 10, 12, 15, 15 years ago? A couple, about a year ago, Joe Scheich was downtown. And he was in some building somewhere, and I don't know, somebody was working, and I don't know what building it was. And he saw one of the guys that had been in that turning point. He was working in that building. And he looked up, and he saw Joe Scheich. And he said, Joe Scheich, June 25th, 2010. That's what it's all about, folks. And Trinity's got a little bitty, bitty, bitty piece. Because we were willing to say, you know what, well, let's run that bus. Let's go pick up those men. Let's get them over here. Let's, let's, let's teach them. And years later, they're still remembering their born again date. Last week, in the last few days, two people that I, lots of people went home to be with the Lord, but two that I paid attention to. One was Sean Connery, the greatest James Bond ever. And don't argue with me about that. Just stop. Don't even, don't even at me about that. But Louisville lost Bishop Michael Ford Sr. from Christ Apostolic this week, and he went home to be with the Lord. And I... Think back on all the Sean Connery movies, and I think back on Bishop Ford's life. And I have no idea of Sean Connery's relationship with the Lord. I have no idea. Sometimes people have last-minute deathbed experiences. I have no idea. But I do know where Bishop Ford is this morning. And what matters isn't how many movies you did. It doesn't matter how much money you had. It doesn't matter all of those other things. What matters is eternity. Amen. How many times have I been telling you that in the last few months? Last thing I'll tell you is we've got to put the kingdom first. Yeah. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. You know this scripture well. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow. If you read back, if you were to go back and read the other parts of that scripture, you know what it says? His eye is on the sparrow. I just didn't include that because I didn't think about you all were singing that song. But that's what it says. If he watches the bird, how much more will he take care of you? So don't worry about November 3rd. 
No, I gotta get through. I gotta. You're. No, you're a kingdom person. Whatever happens Wednesday morning, I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna be hustling like I do every Wednesday morning. I hustle every Wednesday. I'm I'm working every day. I'm gonna do it every day. Tomorrow will worry about its own stuff. I'm a peacemaker. I'm a kingdom maker. I'm not, I, I'm, we're called to live at a different level. I love, I give, I serve at a different level. I can trust my life to the kingdom. In, in the kingdom, we're all one. Jesus prayed in John 17, Lord, let them be one. You understand, we're one blood. We're one race. Acts 10, 27, I believe it is, says we are one blood. One, I think 26, we're one blood. There are, listen, the kingdom of, the Bible says in Romans 14, 17, I'm just, I'm just giving you a lot of scripture. A lot of them I didn't put up. Romans 14, 17 said, the kingdom is not meat and drink. The kingdom is righteousness, who you are. I am who you say I am, righteousness. That's who I am. Amen. If I'm righteous on Monday, I'm going to be righteous on Wednesday. I'm, I'm righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's what the kingdom is. There's no victims in the kingdom. We're victors. We've been saying that for years. Well, now it's true. This is the time the church has got to live out what we've been teaching. This is the time we've got to release our faith. This is the time that the church can shine brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter, and the gates of hell won't be able to prevail against us. And all the stuff the enemy wants to do, we can delay it a little bit. One day we can't delay it anymore. We can delay it a little bit, but one day, one day, the old song says he's going to put one foot on heaven and one foot on earth, and he's going to look at Gabriel and say, now is the time to blow that trumpet. One day, I don't know when it is, but I know I'm trusting. Here's what I know, we're kingdom people. First and foremost, we're kingdom people. I want to show you in closing a video put out by Tony Evans' son, uh, who is a great preacher in his own right, but he, he talks about being kingdom independent. You want to know who we are? We're kingdom independent. That's who we are. This is powerful. I want you to see this. Let this encourage you, and then I'm going to pray over you, all right? Amen. Let's run the video. Listen, I wanted to sound the alarm right now. In 2 Chronicles 7, 14, it says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I'll be able to forgive their sins and heal their land. So if we want a healing to come to our land, it's all about God's people who are called by his name. And if we're called by his name, that means we don't take anybody else's name. We have too many Christians right now who are adding to the disunity. They're adding to the dysfunction in our culture because they're choosing sides. They're saying, I'm a Republican. I'm a Democrat. And they always want to know, hey, who is the Evans family endorsing? Who is the Evans family voting for? And we're not giving anybody the satisfaction of knowing that we're on their team or a dissatisfaction of people thinking we're not on their team. We're not joining anybody's team. We're kingdom independent. We represent the kingdom of God. So when I go into the voting booth, I vote as a kingdom independent. When I leave the voting booth, I just voted as a kingdom independent. And I know you're thinking, Jonathan, you have to vote for somebody. I do have to vote for somebody, but I don't have to give my allegiance to any one person. I give my allegiance to the king. And Every Christian should be giving their allegiance to the king. So you'll never see me, I'm sorry, with a Trump or Pence sign in my yard. You'll never see me with a Biden or Kamala Harris sign in my yard. I'm not hating on what you're doing, but as for me and my house, the only sign you'll see in my yard is that we will serve the Lord. Because Jesus prayed in John chapter 17, I pray that they will be one as we are one. And how can we ever be one as the church of Jesus Christ if we're more committed to our political party than we are our heavenly king? Jesus says all authority has been given to me both in heaven and on earth so why in the world if he has all authority would I give my allegiance to something that it doesn't have the authority of my father we must not know who our daddy is he said in Matthew 16 I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it he did not say I will build my government and the gates of hell will not prevail against it that means the opponent of hell is the church and until we decide to only align with Jesus Christ even if our vote goes in different directions we come out of 
the booth thinking about the kingdom of God. We all believe that we're pro-life. We all believe that we believe in family. We all believe in justice. We all believe in equality. We all believe in, in dignity. We all believe in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. So why do I have to worry about and everybody thinking about what side we're choosing instead of just aligning with the kingdom of God and uniting with that? It reminds me of Joshua chapter 5. When the angel of the Lord came and Joshua, he said, whose side are you on? Joshua wanted to know whose side are you on? You would have thought he would have said, Joshua, you're the man of God. I'm on your side. That's not what he said. He said, I'm not on your side. Neither am I on their side. I'm the captain of the Lord's army. In other words, he came not to take sides. He came to take over. And until Christians realize government is supposed to have to deal with us, it's not us waiting to figure out how we're going to deal with the government. I know you have to vote one way or the other. I know I have to vote way, one way or the other. But when are we going to answer Jesus's prayer? Let them be one as we are one. And I know many Christians have taken sides on the field instead of being the referees that God has put in histories to govern the entire game. All you have to do is look at the comments. All you have to do is look at the hate. And then when you go look at their profile, you see immediately that they're a Christian who loves Jesus Christ. We have that contradiction because they've joined teams on the field instead of the aligning themselves with one king. I want to make sure you know God does not ride the back of donkeys or elephants. He is the king of all kings, lord of all lords, president of all presidents, governor of all governor, mayors of all mayors. So if you want to know who the Evans family is voting for and whom I'm voting for, let me go ahead and settle this for you once and for all right now. I'm voting for the candidate that's already won, Jesus. I'm Jonathan Evans, and I approve this message. I agree. That's classic right there. Let's stand up together, amen. No, nobody like Pastor Tony Evans. What a blessing. If you've been worried, if you've been anxious, I want you to let that go today. I want you to lay down your burdens. I want you to pick up the kingdom mandate. I want you to leave here today recognizing I'm a kingdom citizen. I'm kingdom minded. He made me the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Greater is he that lives on the inside of me than he that lives in the world. My answer's never been in the world and it never will be. Father, I thank you today that, Lord, you are taking the stress out of our life. Somebody's been stressed about a marriage relationship. Somebody's been stressed because there's too much chaos in your house. I want to tell you, peace is coming. Jesus said, my peace I leave with you. Peace I give you that the world didn't give you and the world can't take it away. One of the, the things the Lord's taught me over the last 15, 20 years is how to be more peaceful, how to be less dramatic, how to trust the kingdom of God more. Just about every day, I'm sure it's not every day, but many days I wake up and if I'm facing something, I say the kingdom's got to take care of this today. This is bigger than Steve. I can't figure it all out. The kingdom's got to take care of it. And, and I, I'm praying that for you today. If you've had a spirit of heaviness with people just worshiping a little bit right now, come on, let's just pray right now. If you've had a spirit of heaviness on your life, the Bible says put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And if you'll commit to doing that, I want to tell you that heaviness will leave. That, that thing that's been plaguing you will leave. Father, we ask you today to do that for us. For people that have been weighed under, people that have been stressed, people that have been down, somebody been depressed. If you're online right now and you're receiving this anointing, would you just put it in the chat? Would you just put some comments in there say, I received this today. No more depression. You know there's no depression in the kingdom. There's no sadness in the kingdom. There's no hate. No anger, no jealousy in the kingdom of God. And Lord, I thank you today that you are 
just moving strong in our midst. What a day it's been, Lord. Father, this is going to be a great week. Lord, I declare people are blessed and highly favored. They're blessed coming in and going out. Spirit of God, have your way with us today. In the name of Jesus. Could you just sing something? Let's just go ahead and lead us in something. And let's lift our hands. Let's worship one more time. Come on. Jesus, Jesus you are so good to this house. How great is our God. Come on, sing it. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will sing how great. How great is our God. Come on, let's sing that together. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will sing how great. How great is our God. This is my favorite part. Let's just sing, he's the name above all names. Because he's the name above all names. He is worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great. Is our God. Come on, can we just lift our hands and declare that one more time? He's a name above. He's a name above all names. You are worthy. He is worthy of all praise, Lord. And my heart will sing. He'll sing how great. Is our God sing with me? How great is our God? And all will sing how great, how great is our God. Father, I thank you that you are great and greatly to be praised. And we at Trinity, we're going to praise you. On the good days, we're going to praise you. And the bad days, we're going to praise you every single day, Lord. Father, I thank you that you are our God. You are our rock and our fortress. You are our strong tower. Lord, I thank you. You are our peace. And Father, I believe that Father Trinity people are kingdom people. And Lord, we're going to trust you no matter what. And Lord, I believe that there's an outpouring. I believe there is a supernatural outpouring that has hit this house. And Lord, we receive it. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. And everybody that believed that said, Hi there. My name is Logan. And on behalf of Pastor Steve and all of our staff and volunteers, we want to thank you for watching our service today. If you enjoy this experience, we would like to invite you to support this ministry by giving an offering. There are two ways you can give right now. First, you can text the amount to 84321. New users will be prompted to register. It's that easy. Secondly, you can visit trinityworldoutreach.com forward slash give. That is trinityworldoutreach.com forward slash give. Thank you again for your support. Before we leave you, we want to invite you to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and visit our website at trinityworldoutreach.com. Thank you again for choosing us today. We hope to see you next week.